Okay, welcome, Carol, Dean, and everyone to Check the Gate. Uh, Carol, thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, I remember back in the 90s when I was running an AIVF salon and I was taking classes down in New York and I had applied to the uh, Roy Dean Film Grant and I think I was a recipient early on. And then we met to talk about uh, distribution and other ideas and you bought me a drink in a cafe. Yes. And we, we sat down and, um, and so I would like to repay you. Could I, do you drink wine? Oh, yes, I do. And which do you prefer, uh, red or white? Uh, red, I love. A good Merlot. So I have some uh, red wine from uh, Josh Sellers here. Okay. Um, Joe Carr is the founder, and uh, Josh is the name that they called his dad. Um, and so he named this whole line after his family. So um, all the way from New York, I want to reach, you got that? Got that. Thank you very much. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> How about that? That's movie magic. Now, um, it is three o'clock here, so I'm going to join you. All right in this and I'm going to encourage everybody else to go get their uh, their favorite beverage. It might be a little bit early, but um, let's kick off. Uh, check well, we the used to, It's five o'clock somewhere. So cheers. Here we go. Cheers. <laughs> All right. So uh, welcome everyone to Check the Gate one-on-one. -on -one with the Northeast Filmmakers Lab. I'm Mike Kamoyan and I'll be your host. Check the Gate is a weekly program, soon to be twice weekly, supported by the Capital Cinema Cultural Exchange, a charitable nonprofit empowering emerging filmmakers to complete and present their projects in a rapidly changing media landscape. And boy, isn't it changing. Uh, by leveraging world-class industry expertise through the Northeast Filmmakers Lab. For those possible, please donate something, any size, at cinemaexchange.org slash donate. Special thanks to Check the Gates co-producer, Eric Vollmeiler and Tammy Reese, uh, our publicist and behind the scenes student intern, a great dame from the University of Albany, Luke Williams. Uh, Luke is letting everybody in. Uh, wonderful job, Luke. Thank you so much. This is, totally frees me up. Uh, today's sponsors also include Price Chopper, Market 32, not just in your neighborhood there, your neighbor. Albany Wine and Dine, um, this glass here, uh, and, and this, sh this shirt right here. There we go. Um, great sponsors, and we've got some exciting news uh, regarding that in the coming days. And also by Crew Me Up, building digital community for filmmakers to connect, create, and collaborate. Up.com. Next week, I just want to let you know that we have Jessica from Sundance Collab, and then we'll have our discussion on uh, Thursday, Why Invest in the Arts? And uh, boy, what a great way to start here with you, uh, Carol. Um, you know, check the gate is the, the phrase on a film set uh, where the DP uh, needs to check to make sure there's no impurities before they can move on. And if the gate is good, we, the production gets to move forward. So with that, let's move forward. Today's guest, Carol Dean, is the founder of From the Heart Productions, a top-rated nonprofit. She's helped filmmakers raise over $33 million for their films, documentaries, shorts, the author of a number of books, The Art of Film Funding, Second Edition, The Art of Manifesting, Creating Your Future, and your latest, How to Fund Your Film. Right. Thank you. Carol, you also created the, the Roy Dean Film Grant in 1992, and you've given over two and a half million dollars in grants to independent filmmakers. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to our show. Thank you for your time. Oh, it's so nice to be here. You know, I started in the short end business. And when you say check the gate, that's exactly what they had to do, because there could be little hairs from from the film that would get caught in the gate. And that was the first thing before you could say, shoot, right, lights, camera, action. Yeah, and, and that's around the time that we met. Um, and uh, could you talk a little bit about um, 
Roy W. Dean, your dad? I'd love to, because he was a very special guy. I had started my little film business, and dad uh, had retired in Dallas, so I asked him to move to California and help me. And so he could have had any job in the office, but he chose to work over the counter, Mike, so he could talk to the filmmakers. And they loved him because it didn't matter if you were buying $100 for a 16 millimeter, 100 foot reel or $30,000 for a feature, he gave you the same amount of time and attention. And he would always ask this question, <laughs> tell me about your film. And to a filmmaker, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything nicer. And they loved it. They told him about their film. They told him what they thought of Kodak. And then of course, Fuji came along, we were distributors. So dad knew all of this information. And the last event for uh, that I went to with dad, uh, Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers used to have these great dinner parties. Mm -hmm. The Kodak guys, Mike, were lined up at least five deep to find out from him what was happening in the industry. What are the kids, what are the young people saying about our product? Because they really cared. But dad is the reason uh, that one, he's, he financed the first African-American, all African-American film in America. Two, he started the, uh, the discount for filmmakers because we, he, we spent Sundays together. That was my day with my family. And he said one Sunday, you, we've got to get the filmmakers a discount. So we talked about it and I said, all right, let's just, let's get 5% from our company. And he said, all right, but that's not what I want. I want you to go to Fuji and tell them that you want a 15% discount for filmmakers. <laughs> oh, you know, I only get 6% dad. What makes you think they're going to give it to me? He said, because if you put your thinking cap on, you can figure out reasons and they'll do it. And you know, he was absolutely right. Fuji said, what a great idea. And they gave it to me and we passed it on immediately as to filmmakers, the full 15%. And within 24 hours, Kodak said, oh, we have a new student discount, <laughs> right? That's where that came from. Wow. You know? And then it started popping up everywhere, Mike. Uh, the sound people had a discount. Uh, the rental companies started discounts for filmmakers. So it went into the consciousness and it was so wonderful to have people acknowledge and understand how student filmmakers need more support. So you've been an entrepreneur then uh, for over 30, 35 years uh, directly in the business. Um, on Saturdays, every other Saturday, you host a conversation with filmmakers who are part of From the Heart Productions. And I, I want to just share with you the reason why I, I think this program exists was six weeks ago or, or so, um, I was listening to you and, and you were talking about COVID. And usually we, we, we start off each show talking a little bit about that and the impact. Um, you said um, that we were all born in a way to deal with this. We were prepared for this. And I thought about that. I said, oh, she's right. What have I been doing for 25 years? I've been bringing other people, other filmmakers who know more than me together. And we started Check the Gate. I went to my, my board and we worked, you know, we ironed out the title of this and, and I said, yeah, I'd like to do this. And so I really wanna credit you and, and could you tell me where that came from or your belief in what filmmakers and storytellers have that will help us get through this time? I think they have a direct connection to the universe. I really consider all of us as walking Wi-Fi's. I think that we have this wonderful connection to call it God the universe, the field, the quantum field. You talk about that book, The Field, on, on a number of uh, uh, afternoons. Oh, I love it. Yes, we went through the whole book, The Field, by Lynn McTaggart, with uh, my entire 
uh, fiscal sponsorship group. I mean, you guys have all been so good to me. I wanted to teach how science says that we, one, are all connected with each other, which we're really, really experiencing now in this COVID-19. We're all connected and we care about each other. We're, we want to support and nurture each other. I think that's why we originally came in to this planet and we all came in with the knowledge, a plan of what it was we wanted to achieve in this life. And it could be as simple as uh, being a good father, raising the children, having a wonderful family, or it could be the president of the United States or making films or storytelling. So I know that storytellers and filmmakers are incredibly talented and they do, they have this wonderful connection to the heavens. And the most important thing is to recognize that we're always asking for advice and guidance. And so I really beg my filmmakers to give themselves 15, 20 minutes a day to meditate and get into a quiet place and listen for answers because you can receive, not only are you a sender, but you are a receiver of information. You know, that reminds me of uh, uh, a woman named Janine Edmonds, who is a literary agent here. She lives in the area, was in LA, worked on a number of projects, but she said exactly that. We are walking Wi-Fi's. We kind of pull in these stories and as storytellers, um, we don't often uh, always know what to do with this uh, sort of extra gift that we have. Um, how, is that part of what you see as a valuable tool in this time, especially when it comes to fundraising? I think it's the most important tool. Your mind is your greatest asset <clears throat> in filmmaking and in particularly in fundraising, because this is the first thing you have to ask yourself. You say, yeah, I want to make a film, okay? What do you, what's your budget? What do you think the budget is? Give me a guess. And you have to answer that to yourself. And then you have to say, can you raise that money? And if you go into fear, then you have to say, I can raise money, but I don't think I can do that much. And you really have to figure out how much can you raise? What do you feel comfortable with? And maybe you put the $2 million project aside for the moment and you do a $70,000, $50,000, $100,000 film, get that made, get some experience under your belt and some confidence because fundraising is all about confidence. Filmmaking is about confidence. You don't have a doubt that you could make the film. The doubt comes in when you start to raise the money and that can't happen because when you start pitching people what you say, how you look at them, how you sit, how you hold yourself, how you sound, all of those are more important to the donor than what you say, believe it or not. What you say is only 7% of the decision-making process. That's so, the truth. so it's all about showing up being present, being confident in in what you you've written and uh, and what you want to accomplish. Absolutely, you have to believe in it without the slightest doubt. And you get to that place when you really start developing your product. You know that your budget is accurate. You've spoken to the sound man. You know your color corrector. You know exactly what all these things are going to cost you, and you have a perfect package. You can pitch, you practice your pitch in the mirror, you know that you can say it without blinking and you're confident, there are no us and ahs and I'm hoping to or I'd love to. No, I'm making this film with or without you, that's how you have to come off. If you want to join me, that's fantastic. But if you don't, there's money waiting. So you created, uh from the heart productions. Could you talk a little bit about that and the role of um, FTH? Well, from the heart uh, was given to me when I, I went to India and I went to Raj, uh, Sai Baba's ashram 
And uh, you, so I said, I want to get on the first row. And they said, oh, well, good luck. You could be here for a year and not get on the first row where you can see them that close. So how do they decide? I said, and they said, they throw these weird sticks and the women say, okay, you're in this row in this seat. So uh, sure enough, they threw them and said, oh, look, you're on the first row. So there I was, and this sweet, young, sweet man comes walking around the side of this house, and my whole heart exploded. I just became one element in a vast sea of love. And, um, what, and that's what he told me, to go home, start a nonprofit, call it From the Heart Productions, and what is this for? I said, and he said, you will know. And so I did. I came home, started it, took a year to get everything cleared. And during that time is when my father crossed over. And then I found out from all of his friends who called and letters that he was funding films while I was collecting hot checks around Hollywood. Dad was the one who was giving it away. And so I decided to give, start a, a grant in his honor. And that's what the nonprofit was for. So I did, I learned that six months later. And then uh, it was just one year after another, I just w went out and talked to friends and, and created friendship and developed uh, the grant over the years through people that I met who cared about filmmakers. And that's why I love it because it's not just the money, it's the people that I have who are on the donors list who are marvelous. And once you get to know them, it's, it's uh, you couldn't have a better friend. Uh, we, these people in this industry are so generous, Mike, as you know, with their time and their talents. And that's all you need is a few friends in this business and you're off and running. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's, you know, similarly, uh, you know, we've created a network here uh, and now here, here we are on Zoom um, communicating with uh, over 20 participants uh, here. I'm not sure how it's going on Facebook. Hopefully it's live there. Um, folks, I just want to let you know that you can submit your questions um, here in the chat. Uh, I would like to ask Carol, could you talk about your different books and why this latest book, um, uh, How to Fund Your Film? Well, thank you very much for asking that. You know, when you start writing a book in our industry, it's a year from the time you finish the book until it's published and then delivered. And, and, they, and it's not, in, I mean, it's gone by the time it gets out, it's outdated. So that's why I started a blog talk show called The Art of Film Funding so I could keep people up to date. And then I started writing blogs to keep you even faster up to date. And so, and then all of a sudden I realized that I should take all of the experiences I've had, the things I've learned from other filmmakers and put it all together to help, uh, to help filmmakers because we all learn through experience. And I think it's the best way to learn is when you hear a story about what someone else did that was successful and, and get into the details of how they did it. So I started off with that in mind and I had to go back to the very beginning, which is you have to have the confidence that you can do this. And if you don't, then either hire someone or put someone on your team who does have the confidence and decide which role you want to play. Maybe you want to be the writer and write grants and, you have, and you'll find a partner who will be the spokesperson and make the ask for you. But that has to be done, someone does. And then I just had to go down all the things you needed, all your paperwork, your pitch, your trailer, um, your funding parties and talk about funding parties that I'd been to and worked on and the most successful ones and some that were successful and why they just didn't work. All of these things that I've learned and other filmmakers have shared with me are things that I felt were very important to put in the book or the class rather. Wonderful. And um, 
I'd like to show people a, a sample of this new book at some point. But first, I want to go to Sarah, who asks, I'm writing proposals for a fiscal sponsorship and later to apply for grants. It's a short narrative film. What sort of distribution plan details are from the heart, Roy Dean and others are actually looking for or expecting to see in proposals for a narrative short? And is there a difference between a narrative short and say a documentary? Yes, lots of difference. But the most important thing is, uh, this is a really good question because this is where I pay the most attention. Uh, I want you to know what your options are and I want you to tell me so I know you know. Example, uh, I'm not sure these days if you can make any money on shorts. I've heard that there are a few avenues where you can. So you should be telling me exactly uh, where they are and if you intend to get your money back or if you wrote and produced this so that you could get a point across. If you want to send a message or have a, a film that's perhaps shining a light on an important subject, uh, I want to know how, well, first of all, I want to know who your audience is and then how will you reach them? What are you going to do with this film that will solve the reason that you made this film? You had a purpose in mind. So what is that purpose and how will the film uh, fulfill that purpose? That's what I wanna know. And I need to know that you understand social networking. I need to know which networks you're using and uh, in, when you tell me who your audience is, I want you to tell me where they hang out and where, what you're doing to find them, engage them, maintain them, and sell them your download and raise money from them. They should be funding you if they're your true audience. Uh, and if you're doing a documentary, I want you to tell me, where does this belong? How are you gonna, how will you get it there? Uh, and it's okay to tell me you're taking it to film festivals. I, I think that's important, but don't make that the only thing you tell me because everybody is going to get their film into Sundance, South by Southwest, etc. So you have to tell me what's extraordinary about your film, what the connection is with you and the film, how important it is to you and where it will be shown. Now, I like a lot a couple of pages on distribution would be terrific for me. So the other part of, I think it was Sarah's question, is she talks about From the Heart as a nonprofit fiscal sponsor. And I just want to share with everyone that uh, we as an organization, Capital Cinema Cultural Exchange, is a nonprofit. And what we discovered is that Carol's organization, From the Heart, is actually doing a great job, a better job than uh, we as a small organization here that wants to host the Northeast Filmmakers Lab and one-on-one one -on -one conversations here. So we've partnered with From the Heart. And, and if anyone would, you know, would like to connect, please email me. I'm gonna ask Luke to put my email address up there. And then I can in definitely introduce you to, to Carol. Um, but Carol, could you talk a little bit about your nonprofit fiscal sponsorship program and then say a little bit about the We Did It platform that really has myself and our board very excited? Yes, I'd love to. Well, uh, the sponsorship, the uh, fiscal sponsorship, um, and all of your members would be part of this. The most important thing is that I think that we review your materials once you're accepted we get your materials and then we give you a free consultation. The first one is, where are you? What have you done? What do you want to do? Where are you going? And how do you want to get there? So we go over your material and give you guidance to take it to another level, hopefully. Uh, because you've, you've got to always be improving your project, always. Then the second thing is that if you want to do crowdfunding, then we give you another 
uh, consultation, but that's after you have done a lot of homework because crowdfunding is another animal. It's, a, it's so important that you understand what's going on because it's, you're putting yourself in a world where people say, when, when you're asking for money or talking about your film, they say, well, did you crowdfund? And if you say yes, and they'll say, did you meet your goal? And when you say no, because they don't want to hear because. Uh, even distributors are looking to you as how did you do? Because they think that that indicates how well you'll do on social networking. And they want you to bring your crowd to the distribution. I'm sure you're aware of that. So it's really important that you go into crowdfunding with the thought, I'm going to set a goal that I can hit and I will learn how to do this or I won't even bother with it. So you, you've got to plan two or three months to get your a crowd ready for the crowdfunding. And we have found a marvelous platform. It's called We Did It. They built it just for physical sponsors so that we're able to, you can put up your page and then below your page, you can do peer-to-peer -peer funding. And so let's say that your neighbor or your aunt want to work with you. They can build pages beneath you and they can send us that information, the same information that you're sending, they send to their friends and they raise money for you. So your aunt might raise $2,000 and your friend might raise 500, but they're all there blocked within you. And I like the fact that they have put a lot of time into building a platform that is as good as Kickstarter with the analytics that you can put all of your perks online and you can have weird prices for them. It doesn't matter. You can get your sizes. Everything is designed to do a really good crowdfunding campaign. Uh, and your uh, platform has a lot of bells and whistles that you can use. And we have found their tech staff to be very uh, quick and responsive and they really help you. So do we, but uh, you really want to have a tech sta staff that's right there helping you on a daily basis. And so we've got that. Thank you. Um, Bridget writes, first off, a pleasure to meet you, Carol. I've been a fan of From the Heart for a long time. Question, I have a feature developed with budget, schedules, real, but learned a year later, I need pre-sales and have no idea how to get them. Oh. Um, any thoughts? Well, uh, who says you need pre-sales is the question because that's sometimes pretty hard to get these days is what, what I hear from my producer friends. Um, what is the budget? Can you tell me what the budget is? Uh, write that in the chat, uh, if you would, Bridget. And what is the uh, genre? All right, so while we're waiting um, for Bridget to get back to us, can I show folks a snippet of your, your book? Please. All right, so this will be um, a new step for all of us. If we can pull this up, look at this. Arson Wells once said, I spend 95% of my time looking for money and 5% of my time making a film. And this statement is as true today as it was then. Hello and welcome to How to Fund Your Film. I'm Carol Dean, president of From the Heart Productions, the nonprofit that I founded in 1993, dedicated to helping filmmakers get their funding for their films. I created these classes, How to Fund Your Film, to teach you where to find funding for your film and how to get it. As a filmmaker, you're artists and you love to create and tell incredible stories. And I know that many of you fear the thought of having to fundraise for your film and you aren't sure how to begin. So this is exactly what prompted me to write The Art of Film Funding 
alternative financing concepts now in its second edition. And through this book and film funding secrets that I've taught, I've been able to help filmmakers raise millions to complete their films. Now I've created these classes to teach you to convert all that creativity that you use to make a film and put that same unique creativity into funding your film because creativity is the most important part of funding. How about that? Um, that's wonderful. Um, geez, uh, do you have any words that you'd like to share more about the book? I mean, one thing that I read on, on and I'm eager to, to jump into it, um, is that you also talk now about not just a house party, but you also how to host a, a zoom fundraiser, which is yes. really, uh, appropriate, right? No, it's a great idea, and it may be a fantastic idea for the future because you may have a friend who lives in Boston, and she can bring her people to the party, and you're out here on the West Coast, and you don't have to fly back and go through all of that. It could be a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. So um, Bridget got back to us. Her budget is $2.2 million. It's a historical... It's a historical genre based on the true story of Molly Pitcher, woman fighting for equality. And her question was about pre-sales. Right. Um, so this is a good question. Well, 2.2 million. Um, the point is, has she got any, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but all this has to I have to know if she's attached anyone okay. and uh, because really getting that first hundred, 150,000 for uh, your cash money to get the train moving is the most important thing for something like this. Uh, and getting from zero to start moving, you need well, probably 200,000 to get you started. And you're not going to really get this funding that you're asking for unless you have a huge track record behind you and something or some names attached that would warrant that. So I hate to say those things, but that may be true. But the, the point is, why not send me your deck and, and let's talk next week and I'll give you as much advice and guidance as I can. Sounds like the, uh, the conversation we had in 1997 uh, in a cafe, you're still doing this. You're still helping filmmakers sit down and brainstorm and, and connect the dots and see where their assets are. And, and it just helps us move forward. Uh, well, thank you. But they, see, she's got a lot more knowledge that I need to hear. And she may know what to do next, but she just hasn't connected the dots yet. You've got to talk this out. That's, exa that's exactly okay. what we do at the Northeast Filmmakers Lab. Um, as we, we pull 10, 10 to 12 filmmakers with 10 to 12 industry advisors, put them together for three days. And I tell the filmmakers, you're going to learn as much from another filmmaker as you will from an industry expert, because all that conversation helps you unlock the, uh, the missing pieces. Yes. Yes. So we've got another question from Catherine. Um, as I, I read on your website that you give personalized feedback to applicants, even if the application is not accepted, are you still doing that? And oh, yes. So much. We, we give hundreds of consultations a year, my daughter and I, uh, because that's what it's all about. Uh, I really want to see these films get made and it's a lot of fun to track them. Many people have won a grant after they've applied two or three times because they sometimes come in when they're underdeveloped. But the idea is there and the energy is behind it and they, to take the tenacity of the filmmaker, it's jumping off the page, you know they're going to make it. So uh, we want to see you uh, get your film made. So we we talk to you, we give you guidance, and quite often 
if you uh, take our advice, you usually will send back uh, an updated proposal for a dock or a deck, and we give you more advice because the idea is keep moving forward. And so we love that. Everybody that applies is given a free consultation. Amazing uh, generosity uh, from you and your family, Carol. Thank you. It's really valuable. A um, couple more. Uh, so just building upon this conversation that Bridget has started for us, um, she says that she doesn't have anyone attached. The casting director wouldn't go after anyone until they were fully funded, which brings us back to everyone's question here, which is the chicken and the egg. Um, do you talk about that in your books about uh, any tips on how to get actors attached or a director attached uh, in order to get uh, the funding? And, and so, and, and I just thought of one of the, the pre-sale uh, suggestions that I've heard is that you go to a company and say, here's five of the actors that we are going after for this one role. And if we got one of those five, would you be interested? And uh, that, that's a way of, that's one way of getting around the chicken and, the, chicken and the egg where you don't have the funding to shore everybody up. Have you heard of any others? Well, I, what I've seen, you know, we uh, sponsor features too. And what I've seen happen is one woman had a million dollar feature. She came to us and we helped her with her package, getting it to the best uh, level we could. She was brilliant. And so she raised a hundred thousand. Well, that got her the casting agent, her attorney and a trailer. Uh, even though it was a feature, she made a short film and someone comes along and gives her the 900,000 that she needed because she was there with everything she needed to close someone. And so it's that first money in that really makes a difference. And then of course that 900,000 went in as an investment. And for our contract, we do not stipulate that you cannot go from a nonprofit to a for-profit. It's all right with us. So we, we get a lot of features that come in and raise the beginning money and then go other places to get the investment money. And that's what you have to do. You've got to get that first money in. Catherine writes, there needs to be a movie about your life. It sounds fascinating and inspiring. <laughs> have you thought of that? <laughs> Fun. Well, Catherine, thank you for saying that because I've had some fun experiences in my life. I ended up going to China in 1974 alone. I was to meet someone there who didn't show. So I started giving myself the time to write like a three page story. Uh, and I'd like to and put them all together and see what shows up. It'd be kind of fun. Any other questions out there um, from folks? Please, uh, please send them in. We're we're uh, going to be winding down shortly. Um, you know, the most Carol, important that thing we, that, we, that we really uh, want to say today is how powerful you are as human beings. You are super, super beings is what you are, and getting into your own a special magic of who you are is so important because you're creating your future on a daily basis. And I'm sure you're aware of this because I bet when you go to bed at night, you already have your next day planned and you know what you're going to do and the day happens and all of that stuff happens. Well, that's the same way that you want to see your film happening. You want to go to bed at night and have a vision that your film is finished and see that screening room packed with people and the curtains are drawn and the film comes up and you experience all these great uh, feelings of joy, success, pride. And when you see the DP's name and think, boy, I did the right thing. That was the best uh, director of photography I could have ever gotten and be very proud and then see the end where everybody's standing, applauding and saying you have an award-winning film. 
that's the kind of visualization you want and you want to feel those emotions. The conscious mind needs to tell the subconscious mind before you go to sleep that your film is fully funded, that the money is there. You are, your film is finished because the subconscious is what manifests. It's not as, the conscious mind has too many rejections, too much doubt. The subconscious doesn't. It only believes what the conscious mind tells it. So start feeding your subconscious positive things, happiness, as well as the completed film. And how lucky you were that you got that extra funding, that you were able to close someone. Start with things like that. Maybe they seem impossible, but I don't think so. Look at other filmmakers. If other filmmakers have done things, you know it's possible. So if they can do it, you can do it. We have now that we let people know that you're winding down, we have a, a number of more questions coming in. Okay. okay. So um, if possible, I wanted to ask what you look for in documentary biopics. What made, for example, Kusama Infinity stand out to you and make you want to fund it? Passion on the page. Heather Lynch was passionate about this 12 years ago. She knew everything about Kusama. She adored her. The connection was there. And it, there was no doubt in my mind that she wouldn't make the film, finish the film, and, ha and it would be superb because of her fashion and her respect for the artist. Uh, and that's what you have to do. You have to show me, or any funder, why? Why are you making this film? Because the no matter what you're saying when you pitch us, and this is everybody you're pitching, there's this thing going on inside us that's saying, who are you? Why are you making the film? Will you be there for five years to finish it? I mean, this is what's happening. So we want to hear you tell us your, put your heart out there so we can see it. And we want you to say that this is your mission as a filmmaker. This film fits your mission that you were connected to it and your vision. Use words like mission, vision, and values because that's what wealthy people are thinking and knowledgeable. Now you're talking their language. Once you start talking like that, you'll see them actually relax a bit and then say, now, what were you saying? Tell me that again, okay? You now have their attention. Excellent advice. Uh, Jeffrey asks, what are some pitfalls directors or producers should look out for, whether in terms of fundraising or pitching material? Well, first thing you want to look out for is contracts. Be very careful with the contracts that you sign. Always use an attorney and make sure that it's someone who's been in the business, only in the film business for many years. So take care of you first. To get on a film where you love it, where it's apple pie, because you're going to put in so much of your heart and energy and everything else that it's not, don't take it just because you need a job. You have to take it because you want to do something wonderful. And the next thing, what was the last, what was the other part of the question? Uh, in terms of fundraising or pitching material, are there pitfalls? Okay, the pitfalls would be if you're not sure you can do it, that's number one pitfall, you have to get rid of that. You have to talk to yourself and you have to practice your pitch until you are perfect. And I recommend that you get some books on uh, sales because now uh, this is another one of the million things that filmmakers have to do. You have to become a professional salesperson to pitch someone. You're, you're already a paralegal. You have to understand all those contracts. You're adept at your directing or producing and all the mi millions of things you can do, but now you have to sell. So buy a couple of books, the best sellers on how to close people. And don't expect to close someone uh, on the first date. When you meet someone, 
actually the secret is to learn as much about that person as you can and don't even make an ask but make a way to see that person again and when i was in new zealand i started a, a film grant down there and there was a man but he was the last cappuccino before i went back to the country and he had uh, this great little shack that he had turned into an editing place and i wanted my filmmakers to bring films over there and edit them. So I kept talking to him just about the local stuff, the tomatoes, whatever was going on. And by the time I made an ask, he asked me the day that I was finally going to ask him, he said, you know, I've been thinking about you and I thought that maybe you'd like to use my editing facility and I even donate my time to edit for you. So but that was because I put in two or three months and a lot of cappuccinos to, for him to know who I was and what from the heart was. You have to be willing to put in the time to develop a relationship with your donors. And this is what you want because they'll last. My donors, some of them are 15, 20 years they've been with me and they will stay with you from film to film. It's time. You have to put in a lot of time. Um, another question is, is it beneficial to have several producers on board for a feature? And if so, why? If not, why not? Well, now you're talking about one of my favorite books, which is Producer to Producer. Uh, Maureen Ryan wrote that. And in there, it tells you all the different things that producers do. So. Yes, you may need an executive producer, and that would be someone who can pick up the phone and bring in money, who really has the right contacts. Then you need the line producer, the one who does the budgets, who schedules everything, and has done this a million times before, who can do your budget and save you money. They'll pay for themselves with their ability to get you things at the right price. And then you need the nuts and bolts, the one who's going to really solve all your problems, take care of your insurance, everything for you, uh, all of your paperwork. So yes, you could easily have three producers, but remember, I think the Academy Award now only allows two producers. So you have to decide who's going to be on the Academy Award, uh, who's going up for an Academy Award and make all those decisions where a hell of time. The main thing is that everybody knows what they're doing and what their contributions are, that their jobs are clearly outlined to them. And then you're in heaven if you could have three producers. Uh, totally agree. Uh, as we said, this could be a two glass uh, program. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm on my second glass. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Luke just posted your contact information, and so we've got your Facebook contact information, Twitter, Instagram, um, and again, if uh, if people are so inclined, uh, you can make a donation to uh, cinemaexchange.org. Uh, Carol, any, anything else uh, before uh, I, we uh, wind down here? Just recognize how powerful you are as a human being. Set a goal, a minimum small goal that you know you can meet. And when you start setting goals, you see there's this mind of ours, this uh, thinking machine that says, oh, I can do this, I can do that. And then if you set that goal, then you ask the body, which is millions of little cells working together to allow you to do what the brain comes up with. So you ask the body, how do you feel about that? And if you go into fear or you get a sick stomach, you're asking too much. So negotiate between the brain and the body till you have a good feeling. Yes, I can do that. Set a small goal, write it out, pretend it's already happened, believe in it, feed it from the conscious to the subconscious, have it in a place that you see it once a day, create a to-do list under that to achieve that goal hit that goal and build your confidence because once you do that it's as, as if the secrets to the universe are yours and you can move forward you can do a little more 
next time. Stretch it out and pretty good. It won't be long before you'll be doing like Spielberg and just be able to pick up the phone and make things happen. So can folks join you this Saturday or on another time? Uh, yes. When you do this would be lots of fun this Saturday because uh, we're studying uh, the man, uh, this wonderful man, and it's all about magic and how magic we are as human beings. So if you want to know all about how magical you are, then please join us at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Carol, uh, I can't thank you enough for spending time with us. Um, oh, you're so welcome. And this is truly inspiring. I know you have a wealth more of information. So I do encourage everyone to follow up directly with Carol. Uh, we'll post, links are post here. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, let's continue to stick together. Um, I want to, <coughs> again, Carol, I want to thank um, co-producer Eric Goldweiler, publicist Tammy Reese, the great Dane Luke Williams. This Tuesday, Tuesday. Jessica from Sundance Cola, Thursday, Why Invest in the Arts? Invest in the financial expert, the lovely actress Val Landsberg, hit TV show fame. Thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to all our sponsors, Price Trapper, Market 32, Albany Wine and Dine for the Arts, the app, Crew Me Up, connect, create, collaborate, crewmeup.com. Please donate, cinemaexchange.org slash donate. Enjoy Josh Wines, be well, stay healthy, stay connected. This is Mike Moyne for Check the Gate. Our gate is good. Let's move on, people. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, and everybody here, if you want to just say hello, uh, we've unmuted you. Just let Carol know. Uh, perhaps you can send them thank yous here. Feel free to verbally uh, acknowledge that now. Please. Thank you so much. It was lovely. Oh, thank you, Carol. Laura. Thank you so much, Carol. Enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Natasha. It thank really you so much, Miss Carol. Oh, you're so welcome. It was wonderful meeting you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you, Bridget. Thank Beautiful you, Carol. group you have. Thank you, Carol. They came okay. in from all over. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Luke, for all the help. Thank you, Carol, for all your time and expertise. How sweet, Sarah. Thanks. Okay. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Luke. Bye-bye. <laughs>